So we made a Stranger Things parody. How did we do that? I'm gonna tell you how we did that. If you haven't seen our show, Investigation Extraterrestrial, check it out. It's pretty much all a parody slash homage. It's weird to call it a parody because we're not really making fun of Stranger Things. It's like my favorite show, so I'm not making fun of it, but it's taking a lot of inspiration from Stranger Things. So check it out if you haven't already, but now I'm gonna get into all the behind the scenes of the first season of Investigation Extraterrestrial. So the show follows this sort of agent person who works for a company thing called IE, also known as Investigation Extraterrestrial or Investigation of Extraterrestrials. We basically defend the world from extraterrestrial life forms and such. Wow, I know all that. It's not like it's a secret organization anyway. Then we got a young man played by Grant M. Wilson, my cousin, who moves to California to go to school at UCLA. He ends up joining the team and also working for IE. In the show, we've got some weird stuff going on, a lot of interdimensional activity. We've got creatures from all over the place. We have, spoiler alert, a dog who's actually not a dog. She's the same species as me. She just chooses to shapeshift into a dog and she doesn't want to be anything else. And then we have my character who isn't actually a human. I'm actually a species of creature called a Namu. And then the dog in the show is also a Namu. Our species can shapeshift. So basically the inspiration from Stranger Things just comes from the blend of genres, science fiction, mystery, fantasy, horror, thriller. And then I feel like there is a little bit of comedy in Stranger Things. This is like way more on the comedy side. There isn't really any drama in the show. It's very comedic. In the first episode, we have Grant's character who's kind of reenacting some moments from Stranger Things, like looking at the lights. You can hear me. Like the lights. One for yes, two for no. In search for my character, Connor, he's thinking that the lights will somehow allow him to communicate with Connor, who is not in another dimension. He's just like at some cabin off in the woods somewhere. Then in another scene, we have Grant's character saying, I need to find my door! Which is what Joy says multiple times in the show. She's like, I need to find my boy. She says that a lot. But there's a lot more in this show that is kind of inspired by Stranger Things. Not too much in episode two. That is more of a parody of A Quiet Place. The extraterrestrial creatures, which we call extra tees. I sound like a scientist. Those creatures, I think, in some ways are inspired by Stranger Things, but they're only hands, which they're actually called tentacles. We don't see a full body creature, we only see their hands, and that's all they are. They're just these hands that run around, and that's all you see. So in episode four, it's called The Connection Dimension, which is kind of a reference to the season one finale of Stranger Things, which is called The Upside Down, where they go into the Upside Down for the first time. In episode four of IE, we go into the connection dimension. It's very simple. It's just a dimension that connects every other dimension. Unfortunately, Grant's character gets trapped in there because he doesn't really know how it works. There's a lot of little scientific things that have nothing to do with science, really. Then we have episode five, the season one, finale, which is basically just a reference completely to Eleven. Sigma, who is my sister, plays a character named Elma, who is the CEO of IE's daughter. You're the reason the tentacles keep coming. I've been in this dimension for too long. I ended up leaving a gap in the dimension door. And she has telekinetic powers and she's able to shut these dimension doors and basically kill all the tentacles so they don't cause harm to anyone else. Wait a minute, Nina came through the dimension door around the same time Elma did. That means that maybe Nina's the reason that the tentacles keep coming through our dimension door. Do you need my help again? That'd be nice. 
The technicalness of that is that Nina, who is a dog in real life, her character came from another dimension, and once you exit a dimension door, the tentacles follow. So by the end of the season, the door at Connor and Layman and Nina's apartment is permanently shut. There's a lot of craziness in this show. Comment down below if you'd like me to explain this show even more. I hope this was kind of a nice little behind the scenes and reference to Stranger Things. We're working on more episodes coming out soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that and check out all the other episodes if you haven't seen them yet. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share if you want, but whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Thanks for watching and God bless.